Hello powerful one. Welcome to this edition of Inner Growth to Sezwa LMA. Today we are talking about who you spend time with the majority of the time. I'm sure you've heard the expression, show me your friends, and I will show you who you are. It's also said that the people that you spend the most time with rub off on your nature. They actually define your nature. Let me explain one thing. The human system, not the human being, the human system is both a projector and a reflector. When you project, you send images from your storage system to a screen. And that screen is another human being. And that screen reflects what is projected onto it to the world. Okay. Now, what we are trying to say is that a majority of the times, what you see in people are not those people. They are just reflecting their environment. And when I say people, have I excluded you? Of course, no. You are also a reflection of your environment. So what have you made your environment? Now, don't be quick at running to human beings. I'm not looking at that now. I believe that having listened to my videos for over six months or so right now, I've not begun to operate on that level when we talk about your mental environment. Your mental environment is far more important than the physical environment. All the things that are around you, the human beings, the event must be digitized before it can become data that function and runs your system. You know, when you get a camera and you turn it on an event or a situation or subject around you, the camera scans those images you know, at such a quick succession and they become motion images that are stored away. Now, it is that motion image that are later converted to editable format on an editing system in line with that editing system. Okay, so now, before you start relating, before you start connecting with people and events, there is already a digitizer, there is already a converter built into your system that reads those outputs from those people, from those events, in a certain way and stores them in your system as data that create your reality. Now, that output converter is referred to as the belief. You can see that life is very simple. Your belief is what converts everything that you see around you into realities, into the things that affect you. This is why you will have two people from two different mental backgrounds responding to the same event in two different ways. One responds positively and grows from it. The other responds negatively and degenerates from it. I gave in my radio interview recently an analogy of the lotus plant, which is something that is very respected in the East. The lotus plant is a plant that grows in murky and dirty water, dirty, murky environment. But if you see the flower, it is pristine, it is clean. What is that thing that is in the lotus plant that converts filth, that converts dirt into something so beautiful and worthy of presentation to royalties? It is the internal mechanism. So now, what are the elements that constitute your internal mechanism? They are the beliefs, the kind of things that determine your personality. And how do you evolve a belief? You evolve a belief by association with certain people, with certain items, books, programs. Now, if you have evolved that system over time, it begins to run you subconsciously. And how do you manage it? When you have decided and you discovered that these things are not working for you because they are not giving you the life of your dream, you now want to manage and transform your life from what it is right now. There is a way to go about it. We'll be talking about that way when we come back from this break. I am Oseizwa Anthony Elimihe. You know me. I am in the game of helping you grow from inside out. That is the dream. Now, when you discover that your life is not going the way you desire it, 
what should you do? Some people beat up themselves. They complain and grind. They blame their stepmoms, they blame their stepfathers, they blame their dads, they blame their mothers, they blame their uncles, they blame the political system they are living in, they blame their employer, they blame their colleagues, some senior colleagues, some people that are undoing them. They blame everything for their states and they live in a state of perpetual lamentation. And what this does is that it solidifies their helplessness and their incapacity to create the desired change. That their lives should be having now how do you manage what is responsible for these people's inability it is the company that they are keeping i'm not talking about the physical company now i'm talking about the mental company from the moment a human being wakes up till when the human being goes back to sleep the human being is having companies who are these companies what are the contents of this company in your mind as you are thinking, what are you thinking about? What are the elements or the items that furnish your thoughts? Are you dwelling on why things are not working? You know, they usually tell people, stop thinking, don't think too much. There is nothing actually wrong with thinking, okay? But what is wrong is what you are thinking on. Now, there is a quantum physics law that states that whatever mind dwells on expands. So when your mind is focused on anything, for instance, you say you are thinking about money. Why don't you have money? Why is money not expanding if you are thinking about money? A lot of people say they are thinking about money. Have they not worried me that they think about money? But you see, they are not getting the money. So why are they, why are they having that problem? The issue is very simple. They are not thinking about money from the perspective of having it. They are thinking about money from the perspective of not having it. They are thinking about why can't they have money. They are thinking about how unpleasant it is that they don't have money. That is the content of their thoughts. Therefore, the unpleasantness of not having money will consistently grow in their lives. Young men, young women are thinking about marriage. They are thinking about a worthy, worthy relationship. But the truth is that the perspective from which they are thinking about the relationship is the negative one. Some say they are thinking about their, uh, about their husband, but what, are they, what is the content of the husband's thoughts? Oh, who knows where he is right now? He's probably with another girl, very useless man. Can't even perform, can't even last five minutes in bed, yet he's going after other women. Now, these are the content of your thought. One, there are three things involved in this content. One, you are creating and perpetuating the image of a husband who has no value for you, who will never come home to you at the time you need as one. Two, you are creating the image of a husband who is unfaithful, who is disloyal to the relationship, to his marital vows. Three, you are creating a husband who is weak, unable to satisfy you in bed. And all of these things are of your own making. Now, if somebody in your family decides to go and uh, do divination to know why your, your husband is lacking in these areas, they will say you are responsible and you will say they are lying. You see, your mind is a powerful machine that reproduces whatever it is you have focused your attention on. So thinking is not about the action itself. It's about the content of the thought. If you think positive thoughts, you can have a bad husband. You can have a bad wife like some men will do. They cannot trust their wives out of sight. When their wife's phone rings, they are troubled. They want to know, is there a lover that is calling her? They are so protective. They are so defensive. And sometimes they go violent. Why are they like that? It is because of the low self-esteem, the lack of security they have on their inside. They have been brought up with so much criticism, with so much sense of unworthiness. So they feel that what is good can leave them. What is good cannot really be loyal to them and they are being protected. What are they protecting? They are protecting their background, not themselves. So, the ability to let go. Life can never really serve you well if you can't trust it. And to trust life is not about trusting human beings. No, it's to trust life enough that life will present to you events, opportunities, people, circumstances that are favorable all the time. It's not about putting faith in human beings. Because if you put faith in human beings, human beings will destroy you. That is the reality. Because it is not their fault that they destroy you. It is because of the data that are running in them. They can't help it. 
Therefore, faith in human beings is not because the human beings that you see, they are occupying a human space, which is the physical body, the mind, and the environment. But they are not yet human beings. Some of them are beasts functioning at the level of the gross material elements. Some of them are ego. They are always protective and self-asserting. Some of them are intellect. They are always looking for new experiences in life. This, all these things I've just mentioned are not human beings. They are not humanity. Humanity is eternity, is power, is friendliness, is love, is joy, and it's peace. That is what the real humans are. We all need to pass through these levels to get to that point in our being. But until we get there, we really can't be trusted by anybody for a long haul. Therefore, what our trust should be put on is the fact that there is a mechanism put in space, in place, by the source. And that mechanism is friendly towards all. The good, the bad, and the ugly are loved equally by the mechanism because it is the mechanism of the divine. It is a friendly universe you are living in. But you see, you can actually convert this friendly universe to an ugly, disheartening, destructive universe. It's all in your thoughts. How you want your life to be is a product of your creation. Therefore, if you want to change the past, the life you have been used to, it's a very simple thing. It's about watching the content of your thoughts. How are you thinking about your life? How are you thinking about money? How are you thinking about love, relationship, and all of that? Some have allowed their backgrounds, have allowed their experiences or the experiences of those that are dear to them or that they have come across in books and contents to become the decider of how they relate to the opposite sex. You see, because of what you've seen in movies and all of that, you see women as whores, as cheap, as unreliable. Be it unto you according to your faith. That is what life will say to you, if that is how you take it. It doesn't mean that if you have a pretty wife or you have a handsome, dashing husband who is a GQ kind of person who dresses so well and is very friendly and hospitable, it doesn't mean that person is going to be a, a wayward person. It's going to be a flirt. It doesn't make that person disloyal. But when your thought consistently projects those things into the person, over time, the person will find himself doing these things against his will. The same thing with the woman. They say, oh, a... A man who has a beautiful wife, who has a beautiful woman, does not find peace. It's a lie. In fact, most women who are disloyal in relationship are not even the most beautiful women of all. And some women who are very faithful, they are some of the most beautiful women. Yet there are some beautiful women too who are disloyal and who are unfaithful or whatever they are. But yes, it is a case of how we create our world. So the question for you right now is, when you are alone a majority of the times, what are you spending your time with? What are you thinking? How are you thinking about these things? That is the idea I really want you to have. There was a meme that came out some time ago that says that what you laugh at comes back to you. So if you laugh at somebody, you become like that person. Somebody said, I have been laughing at Dangote and Hotel Dollar since morning. Okay, because he wants to be now the mechanism, the understanding of that is about power. You know, when you have a thought and you pour your belief into it and you are not joking about it, you really mean it. <laughs> Over time, that thing cakes into an image, and that image is a metal image. Once that metal image is formed, you have no control over it anymore, it begins to run you. See, that's how it is. So, why don't you create metal image or something positive? Some people have used that moment of thinking to create perpetual health. Some have used it to create perpetual youth. Some have used it to create money, flow of money. Now, the idea that bad people must suffer is an idea that religion gave to us. Yes, there is karma. You do bad, you reap it. That's as good as it is. But it does not stop you from achieving the goal you want to achieve in other areas, except when you are using your actions of greatness of achieving to destroy others it will wait for you at some point in time for some people it prevents you from getting what you want but this is it if you have a single-minded focus on achieving a particular goal of wealth of a good relationship of having good children of having a good home you are focused on it without wavering every time 
the thought comes to you when you are alone, it's a case of saying, this is my decision. I am having a loving wife. I am having a loving husband. I'm having children who are healthy, whole, and well-behaved. I am a magnet for that sort of relationship. Then over time, life will put into place things, habits, and ways of life that correspond with that life that you want to have, with that relationship that you want to have. You become that person and you magnetize the kind of person that fulfills that relationship dream in your life. Focus is the thing. It's your greatest power. It's attention. Your greatest power. Make use of it every moment you are alone. Don't dwell on negative thought. Don't keep company. Don't let negativity become your company. The moment you spend when you are alone are too important. They are the factory moments you create the realities that become your life. Feel comfortable? Be confident because you are greatly beloved and the resources of your mind can do and undo. Keep the right company and it will be well with you. God bless you.